Hey everybody, this is Jeff from Jeff's Gardening, Vegetable Gardening Containers. Well, I'm doing my fruits in my house here in uh, Florida uh, that we've had for like six, seven years now. We actually didn't get down here for a while. And it's our first trip down since the hurricane in October. Uh, and luckily, well, not luckily for me, but well, for me, luckily, but my son-in-law and my daughter, uh, they, they unluckily lost their house in the hurricane. I think it's the second time he lost his when he's been down here. And uh, they come stay in our house for a while while they got their stuff straightened out and were able to do so much down here for me. So I got down today and you can see our house has a, has a uh, new roof. We had to get a new roof on the house. They lost, like I said, they lost theirs all together. Um, uh, what was I gonna tell you? Yeah, they lost their house all together and ours, like I said, we need the roof. And I'll show you uh, back some stuff we lost. We did lose some shrubbery and stuff, but overall you can see that palm's doing real nice. That was just a little like eight inch palm a couple years ago. That one survived. This one had a lot of dead stuff on it from taking a beating, but I uh, got it cleaned up uh, to a point to where it's back to where it was. This pot has those, I can't think what they're called, them different colored flower things, but it hadn't been watered and they've been in a drought down here, so I just rewatered everything and everything's coming back. So that that stuff, I can't think of what it's called, but it's pretty resilient. We're coming back. These bushes I got on my watering system now for the time we're here and that palm's been trimmed back. Um, but like I said, we bought our trailer full of stuff down. Still got to unload some of the trailer. But there was just a a lot of work of dead stuff and a lot of i'll show you as we go along that palming season so i've put it right there is coming back that's one of the ones i had in the bushes what happens i have these four pots here with stuff in them uh that pot there and i have five or six pots out back and luckily my son-in-law when he was here uh i asked him where they were they weren't where they were at the hurricane they weren't sure but they found them he got them back set up and i watered them and then they, have, they were up and down a little bit, but I haven't been back for a while, but they uh, were able to get them back up. And then I kind of went through them all and cleaned up and gave them some uh, fertilizer. That one's come back real nice in the last two days. Uh, the desert rose came back from nowhere. It went from uh, last year, it was, got too much rain, it was like soaking. And then this year it went from the hurricane to a Drought and it's coming back nice, but like I said, a further this, this is the little orange tree I videoed last year that I put in. It's now, uh, that's roughly five foot tall. Uh, and through all the rough weather, it stayed in a bucket. I watered it, fertilized it. Um, it's, uh, but like I said, when I got it, it might have been, it's a, a navel orange. So when I got it, it might have been a foot tall, maybe. And through all it's been through, I'm just surprised it, it lasted. Now it's even looking better after, you know, fertilizing and stuff. This is one of the trees from Florida. I can't think of the name of it right now, but uh, it's doing absolutely phenomenal. Uh, but I trim it back every time. Eventually I'm gonna put it in the ground because it ends up being a big, massive tree. This palm here that I put in like, it's either two or three years ago for my friend Nan and, um, when I come down, it, I guess more than half of it was dead. So I trimmed all the dead stuff out of it. And you can see over there, I guess it was leaning this way because of the hole in the ground and my son-in-law staked it, but it survived and looks like it's gonna make its way. This palm here was looking a heck of a lot better right now. And you can see I got fertilizer around them. I've watered them all real heavy, but uh, it's coming back. It's still hurting in certain spots, but it took, the wind came right through those woods right there and hit my house and everybody else is down here. So. Um, I'm just surprised so much this lasted. That palm there is looking pretty good. You can tell from the drought they've had down here. I think they said since the hurricane they've had one rainstorm and then we come last night or night before, they had heavy thunderstorms. That's it. But it looks dead, but it's coming back. It's one of those trees. We have it up north too, but it looks dead as a door now. And you can see how it's all bent and pulled from the wind and everything, but it's starting to come back and normally it will. So. We're gonna give it a little time. Last year, you saw I trimmed the lemon tree back to nothing. And even without any rain, that's the thing about lemon trees, once they're in the ground, they just go. But you won't see any lemons on this. It'll start flowering probably around June. The lemons are probably ready in the fall normally on these. Um, but 
I, like I said, after I trimmed it, I, I mean, I trimmed it back to nothing last year because it just got over, uh, overwhelmed with bushes and different stuff that was on it and uh, vines coming from the ground. So I'm very impressed that that even came back and we'll see next time we come down if it's producing anything by then or I'll tell the neighbors to get it. This is another palm that uh, you can see it's shorter and smaller. It was pretty big for a while, but it took, um, we had a freeze down here. I think it was two winters ago when they're not used to having it. A, a pretty good freeze one night and that kind of hurt it pretty. Then it came back and then had a storm here recently, but it looks like, plus I had, in this area here, you can't tell because the grass has been a drought. Uh, somebody's gonna be cutting it soon or either I will, but, um, they had to dig part of that whole area up because they put a whole new uh, septic tank down there for my septic because the concrete failed on it. And uh, that had to be all moved around and everything and rerouted. So like I said, it, it comes back. This stuff's pretty awesome how it comes back. Uh, this palm here has always been pretty good. Uh, kept up, uh, like I said, everything was really heavily watered uh, between yesterday and today and all the trimming I've been doing. Now this is a bird of paradise. Uh, it's, it's looking real, it's, normally this time of year it's kind of dead because they don't get rain down here. They start getting rain like June and it rains like every night at dinner from June through the end of September. And then October through, it seems like May or April, it just never rains. So, like I said, that bird of paradise is looking good. That's a, that's a yellow colored thing. I can't think of what it's called, but it's yellow flowers all over it. It goes crazy once it gets a little constant rain to it, uh, but it'll... Uh, come back too. You think it won't, and that's some of it right next to that lake down there. That'll come back too. This is another type of palm I have. I have two or three of these at my place. Some are doing better than others, but this one is, I don't know, through storms and freezing and uh, the different stuff that's happened down here in the last couple of years on and off. It's just, just amazed that it comes back, but some of it comes to fertilizing and taking care of it. I can see stake this one too. This one went over too. You can see down by the ground where it went in. I'm going to get a little dirt in there to fill those in. Um, but it looks pretty good and I trimmed the, all the deadness out of it. Um, otherwise, you would come along here. My This is from my friend Kathy Also, It was a little vine she gave me. You can see the purple flowers and it grows all up in this trellis. It says welcome and stuff and it's just going crazy. I trimmed a lot of it off today because it was out everywhere. And that one I'm talking about out front and that bucket looks, is that stuff right there. And I cannot think of the name for the life of me, but it's famous for down this area. But um, she, it'll come back. It just looks like dead sticks right now. But they all do that when they get dried up. Now you see this whole hedge that runs down a long line here was sticking out about six foot, five or six foot everywhere. So I had to trim all that back today while I was here. And these bushes to the left are all in a way everywhere so when I was putting my water timers to get things back on and everything I had to trim this and I got a massive pile here and back by the dog back here I got a big pile so I had to trim all that back and I can't think of it's been a long day working uh it's bushberry or bushenberry or some kind of berry weed that is or bush snicker bush in the, in the woods that grows here in Florida and they just you can't kill it it just it just keeps growing so i had to do it all the way there and all the way back along the whole fence there it was all the way over you see another pile there and it was all over to, up to the power line again and i had trimmed it the year before the year before that and last year i didn't get here and then the hurricane so my like like luckily like i said my son-in-law and my daughter and they uh trimmed that back got it because the wind came this way across my yard luckily and uh Blew all this this way. See, one side of my fence over there looks pretty clear, but this side was really affected by it. But if you look at that big tall tree back there, and there's another one right behind this palm. Let me see if I can get a shot of it over here. And that big palm tree there, there was a tree that was probably another 50 foot higher than that, right in the middle of that forest. And my guy Mark that takes care of my yard when I'm not around here, it was huge and it was just old and I said it was dead. And I said, dude. Even though that's not my properties, I have like three or four properties next to me that are undeveloped. Um, I said, I gotta get rid of that massive tree, so they cut it off and let it fall. But if that was, the wind was coming that way, if it would've, that thing would've split right through the middle of my house. So uh, that way I got real lucky. 
that way. And once again, like I said, you can see the new new roofs done on everywhere, uh, which I'm real happy about. Uh, the orange tree has absolutely no oranges on it this time of year. Normally we come down, there'll be some older ones and stuff, but with the weather and the wind they had, but I did trim it all back. It looks like it's leafing again now and starting to get itself back in gear. The lime tree didn't look very good at all when I got here. It's all laying on the ground, so I'm, I, I, I will trim that a little bit, but uh, that's been in about two years now, but when you're not here year-round to take care of it, it's a little tougher to make it uh, produce or do what you want, so I'm just trying to keep up with it and fertilize it and water it while I'm here. And, uh, it suffers in that hot weather at certain times, but it looks a heck of a lot better today than it was looking. It, it looked real scraggly and bad just two days ago. So remember when you get a lime tree and they start producing limes, that's great. But just remember a lot of these fruit trees you get and stuff that people want, they got stickers on them. Let me tell you, you will get the, <clears throat> you know what crap kicked out of you if you're not careful what you're doing. Right, this is a pomelo tree, which produces tons every year. And we thought for sure we would probably lose this, but you can see the pomelos are still growing on there. Uh, it's leafing up. It's getting itself back in gear, which we're real happy about. Now, you look on this one. We didn't get any uh, mangoes off this tree last year. And this thing went through the storm. But I cut this mango tree. You can see there's mangoes everywhere on this tree. They're on every, every uh, branch you look at. This mango tree, which, see if I can get back too much with the sun out of our eyes. This mango tree was huge and I cut it back to nothing. And now it's huge again, but it's producing. It's the first time it's produced in probably three years. So we're excited about that in a way because uh, if you look over at my mango tree over there, I lost probably a third of it in the storm completely. I cut another third of it out today and the tree is leaning. When I get over there, I'll show you the tree, the tree is leaning like over towards that fence over there because a the hurricane just snapped it. And then got so much water and wind down here that it's leaning that way. So I got to cut a ton of weight off that side and then get a come along or strapping system, pull it back this way and lock it in the ground. But it's just got too much weight with it now. So the upper half you'll see of that tree, the probably top 20 feet I'm going to cut off and then let it try to redo itself all over again because uh, it's just too much to uh, keep up with and take care of. And that's my banana tree, red banana tree that my Kathy gave me and my friend. And it's starting to come back now, but I, like I said, I'm not here to take care of that either. Uh, you can see this different stuff here, the palms all over. And all that, that came from that palm tree there, that one, and this one right here. And they were up into these power lines right above them. So I spent a third of the day today trimming all the palms, the top of the trees and everything, and chains on and getting them down because you can see, I don't know if you can see right now, but you can see a part of a fence down there next to the neighbor's shed. And then there's a fence right down in that corner there. Well, all along these posts, all the way down here, I had a privacy fence. And it was a nice, pri it was getting older, but it was a nice privacy fence. And uh, of course we lost that in hurricane. So I'm gonna get that replaced and get that fixed up also. But you can see, these palms, they put the privacy fence like six to eight inches off this uh, fence. And they allowed these palm trees to grow up in between the fence and everything. So you can see that palm tree in the ground just ripping that fence right apart. See how it bent the railing? It bent the railing and pushed it back, way back there. And then there's another one there. So all these were just bending. This fence is leaning and bending back. So once I get all the palm trees cut down to the ground and get my new fence in place, I'll pull that metal fence back up and put the wooden fence on it. And you can see the mango there better uh, with the mangoes. And when I tell you there's a lot of mangoes, you can just look there just on every, every branch you can see. And that's the first time in like three years we got them back. So I trimmed these. If you'd have looked, before, looked at these palms uh, earlier today, you said, oh man, they're beautiful. They did, they looked real good, but they were always up in the power and the cable lines and uh, with the winds down here and stuff, it was just something I had to take uh, I had to take care of and I got to get them out the only way I can get a new fence in there and get it done. And I got tons of palms out front and I'll probably put a palm or two out here, but obviously I got to get all three of those out of there and cut to the ground and get a stump grinder in here, then fence to fix the metal fence and then get my other 
wooden fence back in here and then we'll be back to what I would consider normal, but that probably won't happen for a little bit because everything else I'm working on here and got going on at home. Uh, you can see that birch there. It's, 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 um, that is not a birch. That is a uh, trees. What are these things called again? What? This white and... and uh, crepe myrtle? Yeah, crepe myrtle. I took like a crepe myrtle there. And I got another crepe myrtle, but you can see the damage that was done. See how the tree is leaning real bad here right now. Leaning to the right. That bigger uh, trunk right there was more or less straight up. So you can see where I've been cutting off and I got all this over here. I still got to cut up chains all up. And I'm going to be taking that whole upper half off of there and a couple things here just to square it up. And you can see the ground where it had the high winds and the rain was uprooting these huge trees. Uh, and it's still uh, producing mangoes and it's still uh, leafing, which is weird. So, is there any reason she can't come out? Okay, all right, all right. Um, so, like I said, if you look up there, I'll see if I go back a little bit more. You can see it's kind of, it's just, it's, it still looks good, still producing, but it, it's not, the, it's a third of the size it used to be, and it just needs a lot more trimming and work, but I'll get to it this week as I'm down here. Um, you can see there's just tons of huge limbs and everything I've cut off so far. Uh, palm air came back nice after trimming it back. Uh, everything on this side looks pretty good, but you can see how that stuff starts to take over down the side there. Uh, and this side's really nothing. Uh, the wind kind of blew all that that way. But it's still, it was, it was probably 10 foot high before. Now it's not as high. It was trimmed back, but I got to, before I got out of here, I got to trim it back like two or three feet just to keep it from going wild on my, my yard. I just some native bushes. I didn't get a chance to trim either of these two or three here yet from Florida. They were kind of here when we bought the place, so I got to finish getting some trimming done. This is one I put in uh, last year, and this, this made it through everything, and of course I fertilized it water, but it made it through everything. Uh, weather, freeze, everything happened. And then this one, which is wild, is these leaves you see on here now, like the one I told you out back, out front, it's dead in the pot. When I got it, them things were drooped, brown, shriveled up, looked like crap and that's just two days and you can see how, how much better that looks now but as you know you don't get a chance to water nothing or, and with the insurance rules now you can't leave water on at your your house in different places and stuff anymore they won't cover it if something happens so i did it the first couple of years i kept the water on and it kept up with me but i can't do that now um this looks uh like it might be a goner i'm not sure yet but it was a um uh, it was a, um, oh, I'm trying to think what this was again. It was a, um, oh my gosh, I'm trying to think what this thing was. Oh, it was a guava. It was a guava tree. And it was looking real nice. I mean, really nice. But it was sitting out in the sun and a bit of a draft down here and all the other stuff that has happened recently. So um, I'm going to see what it does over the next week or two, see if I see anything out of it at all. If not, I'm just going to consider that one a goner and see what I can do. This is a, uh, this is a, oh, it's a yellow, uh, it's a yellow fruit tree, papaya, I think it is. You can see what was growing up here, but the winds, you can see up there, snap the top of that right off, right on top of that tree. So it's starting to come back up the top, but I'm growing more seedlings down the bottom now. In fact, I got to take some of them out because really only want one main feeder but i bet you that by the thickness of that i'll bet you that thing was probably eight to ten foot high and once they get up to that 10 12 foot that's when they start producing the uh, fruits up there so that was kind of disappointing but like i said it keeps coming back so we'll we'll, we'll go with that as we just keep going little by little um like i said you see that's just normal stuff that grows it all looks kind of dead the amazing thing about florida is the stuff you put in the ground when it gets this time of year and you come around, uh, let's say around February to March when it hasn't rained for a couple months, you come down, you're like, oh, my stuff's dead. It's never going to come back. And then they get them heavy rains all summer. And before you know it, everything comes back back here. It, it's just, it's weird. Uh, a bummer. Lost my grapefruit tree. 
that one's completely gone, but it was dying anyway. It was, it was still something going on with it. Uh, it was producing for a year or two, but um, it's seen its better days, so that had to go. Uh, I was trying to think. There was, there was an orange tree right back here that's, that uh, had to come out last year because it was producing pretty good, and it just went to, to uh, crap real quick. Uh, and actually rotted it out and we lost it that way and then I had another one uh, I can't see the stump right now but it's underneath all these uh, mango limbs there was a stump there in fact I got my trowel under there from cutting with a chainsaw um, it stumps right back in there if you can see it from an orange tree and then I had a it was a typical uh, uh, mandarin orange and then this one was one of them tiny little orange trees where it's cut off there we had a tiny little like cherry oranges and I lost that one it's been cut off we lost that one in a storm so a lot of work I want to come down to vacation but everybody says take it easy but you got all the time in the world to do this when you retire or something but at the same time uh, you're down here you want to try to get so much done so I'm trying to do it early on so I can enjoy the uh, next couple weeks when I'm uh, the next few times I come down, it won't be as much. And when you only get down twice a year or a couple times a year, depending on vacation work and all that, it just, uh, you've got so much you have to do. And people say to relax. It's hard to relax when you've got all this to do. All right, guys, well, I'm going to check out here from Florida tonight. And uh, I got a couple other videos to be coming out soon. Well, I'm going back to my regular gardening and stuff. I just haven't had a chance to finalize them and get things done with them, but I will shortly. But like I said, I always, like always, I appreciate you guys uh, liking and subscribing to all my different accounts. Um, I, out on YouTube at Jeff's Vegetable Gardening Containers, uh, Facebook on Jeff's Gardening Tips, uh, Instagram on Jeff's Gardening, Twitter at uh, Jeff's Vegetables. And uh, out on LinkedIn, too. I'm out on a couple of different places just trying to promote free stuff, you know, and, and information that people are asking me about. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to – I've had a long day. I'm going to take a little bit of a break and say that's it for tonight because i got a lot more to do tomorrow. i to take that big pine down, too. Got hit hard in the storm. Uh, but I'm just happy that we didn't lose everything. I feel bad for my son-in-law and my daughter that they did, but – uh, at least this didn't happen and we were able to put a roof on here and I'm going to put another fence up soon and move back to where we can be and cut the, we'll get stump grind the stumps out and start putting other stuff in and producing. That's all. Life goes on. We'll just keep moving forward. All right, guys, we'll be, uh, talking to you soon. It's Jeff and Jeff, Jeff Vegetable Garden Tips. Have a great night.